Uh, hi, my name is uh, Marco Rock, and I'm the president and CEO of uh, Cassier Gold. Uh, Cassier Gold is a Canadian gold explorer. We control the uh, entire Cassier Gold district, uh, 60,000 hectare district scale, multi million ounce potential. Uh, we already have a million ounce, uh, 1.43 grams per ton inferred right at surface and open in all directions. And also, in addition, in addition to that, we have a uh, uh, high-grade vein system. These high-grade veins run 15 to 25 gram per ton. Uh, most of these vein systems are open along strike, and we just uh, completed an 11,000 meter program in 2021. Marco, good to see you again, buddy. I haven't seen you since uh, June last year um, when you you kind of implemented a, a new strategy. You, you, you made a call on it. it. Seems to have paid off. I mean, you're nearly double the price. I think we were just under 60 cents when we spoke to you last year, up around 112, 115, depending on the time of day. So the market has reacted well. What what was it specifically that you think they liked? I think, uh, you know, first and foremost, we I think a lot of people didn't really know much about the story. It was an, an unrecognized, underrecognized story, underappreciated story. And uh, I think that's together with uh, the results that we're showing in this most recent drill campaign, uh, have uh, really started to demonstrate the potential of what we have here. Uh, we're really just uh, really scratching uh, the surface. We've built an amazing team. We have uh, an asset has uh, an amazing potential, uh, and uh, and and basically the results are starting to speak for themselves. And and people are starting to really recognize the value of of, of what we have here. And uh, on that sense, I also have here uh, our chief technical advisor, David Reese, uh, which I would like to introduce. Uh, David is uh, is actually been described as the the best uh, structural geologist in orogenic gold systems, and uh, we're very very lucky to have him. And uh, it, he's the best person to talk a little bit about. You know, also, what what we've uh, done last year is he's been uh, uh, quite instrumental in, in 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 preparing the program, and also what we see as a potential, which I think will be quite quite helpful for our listeners. Right, uh, Dave, Dave, nice to meet you. And I'll, I'll, I'll come to you in a second. I just want to just want to finish with Marco here. Do you think it was a case that this company, this project, was just cash constrained? The, the, the potential was always there. You just drilled eleven thousand meters. They didn't have the money to do that before. Was, is, is that is that all that's really needed? Well, I, I mean, the money solves a lot of problems, but uh, you know, I, I think first you need to have uh, a good asset in a good jurisdiction with with, with potential. Uh, then you need to really build a team, and I think we've built, we've built an amazing team, and 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 Dave is just a testament to that. And uh, and also his presence in our company is also an endorsement to to the project and its potential. So you know, you have to take a lot of boxes. There's a lot of risk in in exploration, but we we do have. A very unique position because we have that foundational resource. We're growing. It's 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 the bulk tonnage deposit at Castor North. The Torres is is growing. We're expanding it. We're also uh, drilled for the first time the high grade veins in Castor South, and you know it's really really high grade intercepts. Really exciting, uh, and um, and we're again we're just getting excited. We and we also have a, a pretty unique position because we have mine permits. We have a fully owned and permitted mill on sites. Uh, so we, we have a lot of good things going for us, and and and, and people now are, are are recognizing that. But of course, you know, with bigger budgets, you can you can you can really prove uh, a much bigger potential. And and we're we're taking that steps. And uh, you know, we've drilled 5,000 meters just at Torres in 2020. We drilled 11,000 meters at Torres and at Cassier South on the high grade veins in in 2021. We still have uh, 13 13 holes pending, so still a good a fair bit of news flow still to, to come. And obviously, in 2022 is going to be an even more uh, aggressive and exciting year. So uh, we're on the right track, and um, you know, we're, we're we're just getting started. Right. And do do you think that you you did make the right call? The market says you made the right call, so, so I guess you will too. But in terms of um, you know, you're not you're not spending money chasing high grade veins. You, you you recognize that it's about contained metal in the ground, and you get you set about proving that up with the capital that you've apl applied. To the drill bit, and that, that's that's that you still feel good about that. Absolutely, absolutely. I I, I could I couldn't feel better, and the results are really you know speaking for themselves. It's uh, you know it's it's one thing to say you have a really prospective property, and it's a very different thing to to you know actually prove that out with it, with a truth machine, which is a drill bit, and uh, it's uh, you know the the results are speaking for themselves, and and again we have a great asset with. With uh, with lots of potential to grow, and we have a great team to to keep on pushing it forward. So feel very excited for for what's coming uh, over the next few months. 
Right. And do you think that's been slightly dampened at all by um, Wild Sky? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it, you know we, we we cannot control what you know our our shareholders are, are doing. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, you know they have their own programs, they have their own their own objectives. They truly believe on the potential of of what we have. Uh, they have spent uh, over you know in the previous ten years over thirty six million dollars. So you know they're they're deep in the red. Uh, but you know they have also their their corporate priorities, and uh, you know even even despite that, uh, we you know we we were able to get a lot of traction in the market, and in the in the share price is is uh, is uh, is moving despite having you know a, 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 you know one of our largest shareholders uh, it, you know selling. So you know it's uh, you know I would rather not have to to face that, but despite that, I think we're. we're we're still doing quite well. But do you think those shares are going into good hands? Do you th- I mean, or, and do you have any part or say in that, or is it just a case that they'll sell as and when they need the capital for their, for their own projects? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we've we've really been building. Uh, you know, when I when I came uh, as a as a CEO, it, it was, it, the institutional shareholder shareholder base was very very small. We've built it to over twenty five percent. We can we continue to to be approached by. By by big groups, uh, there's there's a lot of groups that are now approaching us, which is great to see, uh, and we'll we'll continue to to attract high quality institutional investors, uh, and we also have a very inside uh, very high insider ownership as well, which is great to see, uh, and so so yeah, so you know as I said, it, it, I would like my job to be easier, but uh, but having said that, I think uh, we've been able to deal with that quite well, and uh, and, and now that uh, you know that's out of the way. You know our our prospects will look really good, and uh, again, they're very very supportive. They they really believe in the project, but they also have other other objectives at hand as well. And so, um, and I've seen some insider um, buying, but I think Steve Lat when he, did did you let some options expire? Or did I read that right or not? Yeah, absolutely, he did, and in, in the ex- exercise them, and he has put more money into the, into in the two uh, the company and. Uh, and uh, yeah, insiders are very, very excited about uh, what's coming, and uh, you'll uh, you can expect to continue to see them add, and uh, as well as at the same time, we'll continue to add to our institutional shareholder shareholder base, which is which is great. But uh, you'll uh, you can expect to continue to see improvements on that as well. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, interesting to me. In, in any company, you know, sub hundred million market cap, year, what are you seventy or so? Um, Usually struggles with all the institutional component. Why, why do you think they've been attracted to you? Is it just because you know your, your track record in, in in Asia and and some of the and and uh, Steve Latwin involved? Because he's always been involved. It's a case of no one really paid attention to it. So why why, they, why have the institutions started listening? I think it's always a combination. I think it's always, I think it's all, always a combination. I, and the two most important things are always the asset and the people. Uh, and uh, it's it, it's great to have Steve, but. Uh, uh, and Steve was, in fact, already there. But we, we, you know, our team, our team kept on improving. Um, we have Chris Stewart on the boards. We have we added Steve Robertson that uh, you know did a lot of work in in uh, with Imperial Metals and uh, in uh, more recently won the the Schultz Award for Excellence in My Development at Red Chris. So that's a great addition. Obviously, also brought uh, David Reese. Uh, when I joined as well, uh, the main reason I joined was actually the Kerwin, the Kerwin at the time. Uh, I, I asked him, you know, Doug, what's wrong with the million ounces? I can't find a problem here. And he said, you know, Mark, nothing wrong with the million ounces. I see, you know, uh, you know, potential of two to three million ounces on a, on a, on a, on a, on an open pit here. But forget about that. That what's the really exciting uh, part here is the cast air south vein system. And uh, and and by the way, this looks a lot like Fosterville did a hundred years ago. So you know, we should have, definitely go for this. And obviously, at that point, I was just ready to jump on boards. Uh, and you know it's it's um, it's it's coming along quite nicely, and um, and we keep on keep on improving the team. Um, so and and the asset also uh, is uh, is being advanced, and uh, you know it's 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 very exciting to be part of this. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. The, I mean, the the asset is is the asset, um, and the additional drilling helps. I mean, name dropping Fosterville in there is always, is, is a is a familiar phrase. I I, I hear. It. I guess it's down to your plan and how you guys 
um, execute it. And that's, I guess, what we're, we're looking forward to seeing this, this year as, as this plays out. And obviously Dave's contributions that is, is going to be significant. Um, but just, just on, on the, just want, just want to talk about the corporate structure side just a little bit before we get into what I want to talk about today, which is, you know, the, the drilling that you've been doing. Cash position of, you know, just over five million today that there or thereabouts. Any warrants coming through? Yeah, we're getting warrants every uh, exercise every single week. Actually, we have money uh, inflowing to the treasury every week. Uh, I, I think we all the warrants are in the money. The lowest price warrant is sixty cents. The highest price warrant is is ninety. And we could see potential uh, uh, proceeds from warrant exercise of of north of fifteen million dollars. So that's uh, that's quite good. Uh, so we know we're we're in a good position. Um, as I mentioned, we have uh, you know some groups reaching out. Uh, the prospects look uh, very good, and uh, again, we're uh, it's uh, it, we're in a good place. Right. Okay. So you don't envisage, based on your plans for this year, needing to raise any more capital this year. Well, we're we're not sure about that. So uh, we we are getting uh, you know warrants exercised. I, you know, our program will be substantially you know larger than uh, than five million. It's uh, we're looking for some some uh, somewhere around fifteen million. We we're planning a twenty to thirty. 30,000 meter drill program, which also means that uh, in terms of news flow, we can we can potentially you know put triple the kind of news flow we've we've put out this year, which is really exciting. And I would love to continue to to grow. You know, there's a lot of room to grow on Torres, a lot of room to grow on the Castor South Bain systems. We're actually looking into other regional scale targets. Uh, so we'll we'll look selectively. I think it's uh, very important to select. Uh, um, you know, good shareholders uh, more than anything that really understand the potential of of what we have here. We've basically added a couple of really good uh, investors, EMA out of the the US, also Crescat Capital in August. Uh, you know, Quentin Hennig, which is a which is a world renowned geologist, uh, you know, is on the board of Newfound Gold. He's, he's the, the chief technical advisor for for Crescat Capital. Actually, uh, has said that if you know if there's a place where you can find another Morantown, which is the, the biggest um, uh, producing open pit deposit or genical deposit in the world is in a place like Cassier. So, you know, that's a, another name drop if you, if you want, which is, you know, I, I, I love these comparisons. It really shows the potential of, of what we have here, but, you know, we need to keep our feet on the ground, you know, take it one step at a time, but we're set, certainly heading uh, in the, in the right direction. And uh, again, we'll, uh, we're, we're still in a, we're still in the process of doing that turnaround that, uh, we were uh, proposed ourselves to do one and a half one and a half a year ago. You know, investors are are enjoying it, and uh, you know, we're, as I said, we're we're just getting started. Perfect. Okay. Well, look, we better get into the the meat of this, which is um, and, and maybe there's two parts to it, which is just since I saw you in, in June last year, you were done the 11, 11,000 meter um, program finished. So, um, tell us a little bit about that and what you what it allowed. What it helped you to see in terms of what what was in front of you, and then maybe talk about this thirty thousand meter drill program that you'd like to do. What where would you be going with that? Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. So I you know like we 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 had some really uh, good good results, but uh, as I mentioned, I think the best person to really speak to uh, uh, you know the intricacies of of and actually what's been the, the main the main maestro of of the drill program uh, last year with David Riesel maybe. Uh, Dave, I'll only invite you to to talk a little bit of you know answer the question from from Matthew what we've seen and and you know what what we're you know we're, I know that we're still next week we'll have a technical meeting to put some more details into the program for this year but you know, there's quite a bit of agreement into you know the main the main lines of thought that we're looking for 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 the 2022 drill program as well I don't know if you want me to pull any any uh, slides uh, from the presentation. Probably the the, the cross section there, uh, Marco. But uh, overall, I mean, the, the program uh, really achieved the objectives that uh, they set out to do. And for the Taurus area, uh, the drilling there um, was was planned to uh, further upgrade the knowledge of the the mineralization in the deposit uh, to establish continuity of higher grade mineralization. 
in Taurus and to step out uh, on the margins of the deposit with the intent of finding uh, extensions in open areas. So you can see this cross section that Marco has brought up here is a view looking west uh, across the whole property. And it's a huge property. You can see the scale on the lower right. And there's a lot of topography, but it's reasonable topography. It's very accessible from a BC standard. And you can see on the on the far right, there's, a, there's about two kilometers of vertical from the Lucky Prospect on the right down to the Taurus deposit, which is in the valley. So Taurus is a nice, uh, rolling valley bottom area, very accessible, very amenable for potential open pit mining because it's outcropping and it's a, a fairly flat lying area. And the mineralization there at Taurus is a, is a broad zone of um, uh, disseminated pyrite and, and quartz veinlet mineralization uh, that occurs in mafic volcanic rocks, nice competent host rocks there. And so the, the program uh, in that area was really looking internally in this 1 million ounce resource. It's a million ounces at 1.4 grams. It's an inferred resource. So of course, if you're looking at future economics of these deposits, you have to take that to a higher uh, 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 resource level. And one thing we knew from the previous drilling is that despite the very wide spacing of a lot of the drill holes, a lot of the holes are 50, 100 meters apart. To, for indicated status, you've got to get to you know, 25 to 50 meter spacing, depending on where you are in the deposit. So one of the objectives was to take higher grade portions of the known resource and establish better continuity. Okay, so those would be the areas, of course, that you would aim for uh, in looking at, at upgrading as the potentially highest economic viability within the deposit. Plus, you have the ability by tracking out internally within a low grade resource, higher grade domains will increase the total allowances in the deposit as well. So that was one objective and you'll have seen, um, I don't know, Marco, do we have the, uh, um, some of the, the cross sections? Um, we, can, uh, we can show some of the um, uh, intercepts here that were obtained. Um, you can, if you go to the pay, previous table there, uh, on the previous slide, you can see some of the intercepts at uh, 23 meters at 3.56 grams per ton. Uh, you know, there's 37 meters at 1.8, 45 meters at 2.4, and so forth. So these are all above resource grade. The resource uh, grade is 1.4 grams per ton. So if you could define uh, corridors of of, of two grams plus in here, that obviously is going to have a significant impact on the economics. You have continuity of higher grade material, plus, as they say, um, establishing continuity between drill holes where you can actually take that, that grade between holes has a, has a huge impact. And we succeeded in doing that. And that's some of the results that really, I think, had an impact uh, on the, the market in, in this program. And the other areas too, you can see um, on that map, there's the Southwest area where you can see holes 137 to 139, and also holes 125, 126, and 129 on the south side of the resource there. Now, those holes were all drilled um, uh, in orientations and positions that really expand mineralization southward. Like, for example, hole 139 there, um, uh, and uh, 137, 138, 139, all of those holes hit broad zones of mineralization that are totally open to the south. And so you can see that the resource cutoff grade is, is 0.3 grams. All of those intercepts over 100 meters well for, for 30, 137, 139 were, were long intercepts over 100 meters at, at, at above resource grade. So that showed a, a, a significant area for potential expansion to the south. And I, I draw your attention to the scale of the map at the right. You can see this is a big area. So, um, so that's 400 meters on the scale bar. You can see the, the, the total area of, of the Western part of the Taurus deposit has a North South uh, strike area of, of over two kilometers and every step out to the South of with intercepts like this over hundred meters um, is, is going to add some significant tonnage to this resource. So uh, these drill holes this year have provided now the basis for stepping forward next year with a much larger program to continue some of this, so to, to help further establish some of the, the higher grade continuity within the Taurus deposit, fill in some of the gaps. You can see that plan map on the right, the red air outlines are the uh, resource at the plus 0.3 grams per ton um, uh, grade. But some of those gaps in there are artificial, like the area that says gap there with hole 127 did uh, intercept uh, mineralization in those areas too, and uh, holes 130 and others to the Northwest. So. 
so essentially the infill, uh, some of those areas to be infilled are related to wide spacing of drill holes that uh, um, really were too far apart to bring the resource through before. And then the overall outline of the total resource you see there, you were uh, commenting earlier about some of the history here, um, is that you can see that the the mineralization extends to the limits of drilling um, to the north and south and east. There's no drill holes. And what you're seeing there is essentially the historic outline of the property boundary of international tourist resources from the 1990s who did most of the drilling initially here. And so subsequent operators have viewed Taurus as a potential uh, resource for open pit mining and focused a lot of their drilling within it. There's very few people that have actually stepped out beyond the limits of the drilling from the 1990s. So that is the intent for next year with, with the expanded program because the mineralization is really open all around you here. So when so. you say next year, do you mean this year, 2022? Or? This year, 2022. Right. Okay, That's so you said that a couple of times, I'm like, whoa. Okay, next season. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Next season, I should say. Yes. Right, and what, what's your brief, Dave? What, 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 what does the board want you to do? You come in as an advisor, you, you know Orogenic, uh, you've got a reputation. So what, what are the quick wins, you think? Well, I uh, certainly um, uh, um, I um, I have knowledge of the property from before, but I also work on a lot of deposits all around the world. So um, uh, my background's mainly in uh, advanced projects and uh, and mines. So here, in looking at this situation, what I see is helping um, provide some vision to forward, especially within the strength of the other board members. There's a, there's a very powerful board here, very good uh, management team here. So that's one of the appeals, certainly, as, as Marco said at the company, is that the company has the ability to, to move this forward in a realistic sense. So um, what we have here is if, if you had a, a scenario where you were able to increase uh, that the size of Taurus and, and come up with a mining reserve here of over 2 million ounces, plus on Cassiar South, find areas of high grade mineralization where you can get a few hundred thousand ounces of high grade you have the potential for a blended operation where you have uh, the uh, the lower grade material blended with a high grade from the south and you have a, a topography here that allows you to do that you have existing mining leases over the area so really what we want to do is take an exploration program fit it into that framework and use the strengths of the board and the management to bring this far property forward in such a way that we actually have a project that could be a real viable operation, uh, taking real step outs and really being bold about um, expanding this project base. Okay, so what, what I'm what I'm hearing is um, get to two million ounces. That's a, that's a realistic and, and, and obvious target because and that's when people start to take you seriously. It used to be one million, right? That used to be the thing. Right? Two, two million is, is where you where you need to be. It's a bulk operation, but with some maybe some quick wins or some quick answers with the high grade stuff. And you can get enough of that going quarter by quarter by quarter. You can get this two million ounce relatively quickly. Um, so your job, I guess then, Marco, is make sure you've got the money to do this, this 11, uh, 11,000 meter, um, sorry, 30,000 uh, meter drill program. Um, do you, are you getting the sorts of noises in the market would suggest that you know if you're not quite there with the warrants that you're going to be able to go to the market and and get this get this capital? Given this is this is this has been an old story. It's been sitting with a million ounces for quite a while now. Um, do you think you're going to get permission to 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 go out and get this two million ounces? Absolutely. That's that's uh, I think two million ounces and, and more. I think uh, <laughs> I think the potential here is uh, is is a lot bigger. We need to take one step at a time. Um, I, I think for 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 this next season, uh, we'll be a lot more aggressive than we were. Um, you know, because because a lot of the drilling was old, um, we needed to basically work our way inside out to really understand it and make sure we're comfortable with geological models and the geological controls for for this project. And for sure, yes, the 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 uh, the, the board is very supportive. Uh, they they uh, the, the goal here is is really to um, Basically, make sure that this uh, world class asset becomes uh, a mine, you know, sooner rather than later. Uh, the, the most likely scenario, in, in my opinion, is is you know an asset like this will will probably get uh, you know taken out by by a major sooner or later. Uh, but you know, we need to do our work to in, and really need to you know build those ounces, increase uh, increase those ounces on the voltage, increase those ounces on the, on the high grade veins to the south. Look at new avenues of, of growth. 
which we haven't spoken. We have lots of really exciting targets across our property. We're just we're not just tourists. We're not just uh, um, cast yourself. And um, and yeah. So and, and we and, and you know regarding the finances and, and the cash to be able to to execute that again, we're, we'll be very selective. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's been quite a bit of work. Uh, you know, kind of cleaning up, turning this around, and and really make sure we attract the, the right type of investors that really understand the potential of, of what we have here. And I think we've been uh, quite successful with that so far. And um, I think we'll be uh, you know we'll be making the right decisions at the right time to make sure that we have all the tools necessary to. Okay. Okay. You have you have, you've made a lot of the right decisions so far. It's, it's, it's good, and you've been rewarded for it, right? But what I'm what I'm looking for are the, are the kind of how you're going to signal to the market that the answers are are coming because you don't want to be sitting doing a another another resource estimate, you know, every six months. You know, you, you don't want to do that, but you want to do the drilling in a way which allows people, you know people like us or um, you know certainly some of the analysts covering you. Um, to be able to put the numbers together and go, do you know what they're they're putting together 200, 250,000 answers per quarter? I think we can see ourselves getting there relatively quickly. So, you know, that's a communications job on your part. But it also relies on Dave saying we need to drill here because the quick win is getting to two million answers. Yes, it can be bigger than that, and maybe there's a more systematic approach to it. But you've also got to play the market. So, is that is that very much in your part of your thinking? You know, absolutely. I think uh, you know it's it, it's both things go hand in hand. We need to we need to make sure we'll, we're we're making the the light uh, the, the right uh, geological and corporate decisions, and make sure we can communicate it effectively to the market to make sure that, that they understand. And I think I think that the, the market is 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 finally starting to understand the potential of, of of what we have here, and it's it's a really exciting property. And uh, you know we're we're opening on our in, you know open laterally in all directions in that depth as as the recent drilling has proven. And we'll 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 continue to grow and continue to attract the, the right type of investors that really understand the potential here. And I think um, I think we we have all the tools to succeed. And and now you know it's it's time to execute. Yeah. So, so when does the guidance come? In terms of, so when's the drill season start? And when does your guidance um, get issued as to where you're targeting for us? Because you're not necessarily going to have all the money you want day one, but you're going to start a process and then maybe go out to market and raise the, the remainder of the money at, at some point. So when do we start? Getting a, your vision down on writing, so we can actually look at it and see if we agree or not. So we, we have a basically a, a, we're planning a twenty to thirty thousand meter drill program, so a substantially bigger program. Uh, we've we've just completed uh, uh, announcing all the results from Cassier North from Taurus, um, and we still have thirteen holes spanning from Cassier South, where we have the high grade vein system. This is where we have you know these these veins on average you know run to two to three meters thick. 15 to 25 gram per ton, but we had the intercepts there, for example. That's how we started uh, the, 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 the press release uh, season uh, in October. We released 4.8 meters at, at 35 grams per ton and 6.4 meters at 12.6 grams per ton. These are really exciting widths and grades. Uh, and the exciting thing is, is you know, they're just uh, 150 meters away from the underground workings in the infrastructure that we have there. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's basically... Uh, uh, the near mine resources that that are open and we're 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 looking to grow. So you know it's uh, it's it's we're we're we are in a very very exciting place and and um, so but because we're still uh, basically working uh, on exactly you know we still haven't really re received all the the, the drill results uh, you know that that will also be part of the, of the process. We will have to have a, a basically a, a healthy balance between continue to grow Taurus. Uh, upgrade Taurus, expand Taurus, um, grow the South Cassier veins. Uh, also, um, upgrade the South Cassier veins because we have it. We are in a in a mine lease, and we also have a fully owned and permitted mill. We could potentially take them to to, to reserves as well. Um, and um, and it, that really has the potential to 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 aggressively re-rate the company. And you know that's that's I'm not even mentioning other regional targets that. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure you know Dave would also like to talk, but I don't know, Dave, if you if you like to add anything to 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 this in terms of the of the potential that we have, or in terms of uh, of the drill the, the drill campaign for for this upcoming season. It's uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting season, I think. Um, there, the this the combination of of having the ability to drill 
within and the, uh, the margins of deposit as, as at the same time as, as doing some of these more regional drill holes is, is really an ideal combination because you not only you're sharing the infrastructure and the cost, but but from an investment sense, there's going to be a steady stream of news here. And it allows the company the ability with a program like this to really step out and be bold drill long holes in other areas, you, which in, in times where you'd have smaller programs, you'd never drill them. So it's the opportunity to drill some of these prospects. Like there's a prospect uh, uh, approximately two kilometers to the east of, of Taurus uh, called Snowy Creek, which has the same style of veins um, in outcrop. Um, that I think Marco's going to show us on the map where that is. And that, uh, that prospect uh, is... Sit, you're right there. It's sitting above a creek just below which Snowy Creek, which has placer workings all along it. So this placer draining down from there, the mineralization style is the same in Snowy Creek as in Taurus. So we've got a potential for really expanding the strike length of some of that uh, mineralization in that area. And then all over the, the project, you can see the area in the orange color on the map there. That's the mining lease. And all through that area, if there's any discoveries of veins, and, and you can see the Cusack volume and main veins there. These are all um, high-grade veins that produced at, at plus 10 to 20 grams per ton. Uh, historically, they produce over 300,000 ounces from these, from the mill that the company still has. And uh, there is potential, a lot of potential there for periodicity of those veins. So drilling holes that um, between a lot of these vein systems, like this two and a half kilometers or so between Cusack and Volak, which has very little drilling. And these veins typically in the clusters you see on there that were historically Historically mined have a spacing of 50 to about 200 meters. So, uh, not saying that's going to hold up all the way in between those um, uh, those areas between there, but it, that there's a very high likelihood of defining additional high grade veins in between there, for which the company has um, underground workings right nearby. And the workings will also provide a very interesting potential upside as well from an exploration sense because the veins here are steeply dipping. And so ideally, you know, if you wanted to drill the optimal direction orientation, it would be horizontal drill holes. And uh, so the underground workings provide you a platform where you can explore in the wintertime if, if we want to, uh, where you can drill horizontal holes between and look for uh, other veins uh, that may lie between the, the, the areas of, of previous mining. So lots to do from surface and underground. You can see the roads on the map there. It's uh, excellent infrastructure you can get around everywhere um and so for bc standards it's some of the best exploration you're you can you can have from an infrastructure sense okay so but mark the question i was trying to um get an answer for was are you going to lay out for shareholders and, and others observers um a determined predetermined plan or do you want the flexibility of being able to uh, adjust and adapt to the information which you're getting back from the the drill bits you know so do we know where you're getting you mentioned a few places there but you haven't talked about number of meters there or you know number of drills etc or when so when do we ever get to see that or is it a case of we will just be a little bit more agile no absolutely i think you know again i, I think that we will not need to have the, the the information it's quite important to see the information we'll get from Cassier South. Uh, obviously, we're 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 hoping it's uh, a lot of the high grade like we've we've seen in the in the beginning in the in the in the in when we start releasing drill results. Obviously, so so but you know it, it's quite important that we we look at the data, we refine our models, we, we you know we we work on 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 targets and and I think you know we will need to rank them right. So so it's uh, it, it, it's a bit of a a bit of work that needs to be done. We'll need to assess uh, what we've seen, uh, come up with a plan. But in, in, but at the end, we'll have to have a healthy a healthy combination of this, uh, you know, in infilling and upgrading some areas of of higher grade within Taurus, aggressively stepping out at Taurus. Um, the same for the high grade veins in the Cassier South. Looking at the prospects like Snowy Creek, which could be very similar to Taurus, and uh, we could you know it. Uh, could be could be a similar style of sonage. I, I I certainly hope so. Uh, so so w w I think you know the the, uh, the, the excitement and uh, and the ranking that the geological team will come back from from these targets will help define what is the exact proportion. And we'll be we'll be communicating that to the market. But there there's some still work to be done. And um, and you know we'll have to do it. So uh, obviously because of the delays in the in the drill results. 
that's that's a little bit more delay than, than we'd like to see at this point. Okay, brilliant. And one last question. Okay, I'm just conscious of your time. I'm taking a lot of your time here. Um, no change on the tailings. No, no, no. Uh, we have we have a good a, a tailings facility, which is which is good. It's sitting there. You know, we have some ounces. Uh, you know, we have been people have asked us about you know can we can we you know turn you know process thirty thousand ounces. I think that's. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll process it effectively when uh, when when we're processing uh, everything. There's there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, I I think the only kind of short term opportunity that those tailings uh, tailings ponds provide is actually uh, because we have the mine permits because because we have a fully owned and, and, and permitted mill. Um, especially if we can get uh, quick success at CAS yourself, we can build uh, a nice inventory. Of, uh, of high grade, you know, we currently have an historical resource. It's not for it we own own compliant, but those those uh, that, that resource is there and is open along strike, and that was the focus of the exploration campaign this year as well. So if we can turn that resource into a for it we own own compliant and, and turn it into 150,000 ounces, 300,000 ounces, 600,000 ounces, you know, with that 300 ton per day uh, mill, um, we could we could potentially using that inventory of of high grade, let's say at 20 grams, we could be producing. In not a, such a distant future, seventy thousand ounces per year, uh, which you know, with with a twenty gram per ton, it could be. I'm assuming it will be very, very low cost. So it's a, it's it's an exciting development opportunities. You know, the, the property offers a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of room to grow. Uh, we have both tonnage, we have high grade. Uh, you know, we have a lot of exploration upside and in a in a team that is. Uh, uh, you know, very capable and, and eager to to prove the potential here. Brilliant. Look, guys, uh, Marco, thanks very much. Dave, lovely to meet you. Uh, you must come back on with one of our geological analysts and kind of get into the weeds once some of these, uh, well, some of the outstanding assays come back, but also some of the some of the new drilling um, comes through. So I appreciate your time today, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Dave. You're welcome, Matt.